Okay, so a couple of questions have come up uh, regarding these types of problems, okay, where there you have an object that impacts a stationary object and what we do about it. There's a couple of problems associated with uh, with this, or at least one of them I know for sure. For 19.78 is one of those. So I just want to take a quick second uh, to discuss this. Uh, it's kind of hard to do via email. So basically to solve this problem, right, we'll just kind of step through the, the, the steps here. Uh, to solve this problem, uh, what we're looking at is this thing starting out up here, okay, this little hook, and it's falling from here down to here, okay, and then then what it does is it strikes a peg here, right? I kind of just I, I your 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 problem doesn't look like this. I've kind of copied this and then drew, drew it down here, but it strikes a, a peg down here. So you go from this state down here down to this state right here, and so that is uh, a work energy problem to go from that state to another state, and so you're going from this state down to this state okay state one down to state two state two is right before the impact okay and then there's an impact with a stationary object okay and that goes to state three which is just immediately after the impact right and so the bar is still horizontal like this but it but it's impacted the stationary peg right so it goes step uh, stage one or, or or yeah state one down to state two right so it, it increases in velocity because of gravity the potential energy from the gravity goes goes from here to here okay and it goes into kinetic energy then at this point right here uh, there's an impact and it goes from state two to state three when you do that impact that's going to be a conservation of linear momentum problem right and i'll talk about that in a second and that and because there is no energy conserved across the impact okay and so uh there this thing comes out and sticks to it right here and then psh, the thing starts rotating around okay and the impact will tell us what that omega is after the impact Okay, uh, and then after that, it becomes work energy again, and it goes from state three to state four. And state four, this thing is gonna, this thing is gonna go swinging up to the right, kind of what they're showing in this. But it's gonna swing up to a certain height. Okay, and then the last part of the problem says, okay, how do I compare the energy? you know, the potential energy and the height of this peg back to the potential energy that started. And you should see that they're different because energy was lost across the impact when this guy strikes this peg, okay, or between state two and state three where there where there's uh, uh, impact there, okay? So then you might be saying, okay, well, how do you know it's conservation of angular momentum? And I kind of had some issues with this a little bit to begin with as well, because it, the state, the first thing you're supposed to do when you do conservation of angular momentum type problems is to look at your free body diagram. If we look at our free body diagram that I've drawn over here on the right, we have the reaction from the peg, right? And I call, I'm calling that this point like A over here. Uh, and so you have, you know, this, this, uh, not the reactions there, AX and AY at that point right there. But then you also have this mass times gravity term, okay? And so if you look at this, are there any points on this object where the moments equal zero? And the answer is no, there's not, right? Because of this mass times gravity term. You can't say the moments here are zero because this mass times gravity term is causing a moment. You couldn't say the moments here are zero because AX and AY are zero, okay? But what the book discusses, and there's a section of the, the book that we'll look back there. All right, we'll look back in a se we'll look there in a second. They've got a little a section associated with this of objects impacting uh, not moving objects, objects like the earth or in this case, this peg. And so in this particular case, what you could say, right, is you're looking at, was it the integral of m dt? It's the angular impulse, and that causes a change in angular momentum, hg2 minus hg1 okay and what the book says is that this the moment due to this 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 the moment due to mass times gravity it takes it, 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 it is such a small impulse or i guess the amount of time that it takes during that collision right there is so small that this dt goes to zero okay it's not the moment, there is a moment there, but the DT, the amount of time that that, that impact takes, it's so small that there is, no, there is no effect on angular momentum. And so what this says is that HG2 is equal to HG1, okay? Because of the time that that impact takes is so small, that this moment has very little effect on the angular momentum. And so you could say the angular momentum is conserved. And what the book says, 
specifically. Look at the book here. Let me scroll down. Oh, let me get it here. Yeah, it's the one with this motorcycle. Uh, yep. Okay. So the, this is right, this is a section that's and and I I encourage you to kind of look at this uh, section. But it says. Um, Example 19.8, impact with fixed obstacles. And then read through this little discussion. It has a little discussion about uh, why or how you do these types of problems. In particular, it says somewhere in here, right here, also the force of the impact exerts. Oh, you can't, I can't draw on this. Can I draw on this? I can't draw on it. But anyways, if you zoom in right here, it says, also the force of the impact exerts no moment about the point of impact. So the motorcycle's angular momentum about that point is conserved. We assume the impact to be so brief that the angular impulse due to the weight is negligible. Okay, and you can see that little component right there. And so we can make that same assumption. So this is the same assumption that we make here, that the, that the amount of time that that, imp, that that impact takes is so small that dt goes to zero, and so angular momentum is conserved. Okay, and if you apply that, then you can you can make this thing work. And so uh, the other thing to note, and when you're looking at this hg1, what's the angular momentum before the impact? Well, it's going to be the angular momentum of the mass center, right? This thing isn't spinning as it's going down, and so it's the angular momentum about of the mass center about that peg right there. And so it would be an r cross mv term. R cross M V term. And so uh, that's what it is before. And then afterwards, it's going to be I about a fixed point, right? The I about its end right here times omega. But I think that, that should hopefully get you started on that problem. All right. Break. I'm also going to be available tomorrow right after the quiz for any questions associated with the homework.